a company of native Christians in the district of Thongzai, British Burma, assembled on the banks of a pool to witness the baptism of several disciples. The surrounding rocks and hills were covered with spectators who had gathered from the neighboring region. Near the water stood a father and his son, the first of whom had made himself conspicuous by a most bitter opposition to the gospel and by most strenuous efforts to discourage his heathen neighbors from becoming Christians. As the native pastor opened the services at the pool, this opponent broke in with the most blasphemous interruptions, mingled with all manner of obscene gestures and lewd demonstrations. The preacher repeatedly rebuked him, but his words only stirred him to a more flagrant outburst of wickedness. The father and son now stripped themselves of their clothing and plunged naked into the water. And as the pastor was about to baptize a disciple, the old opposer mocked the ceremony, seizing his son by the ankles, dipping him several times in the water and pronouncing over him the baptismal formula, coupling the name of the Trinity with the most horrible blasphemies, so that the services were completely stopped. Standing on the bank of the pool among the company of Christians was a native Karen evangelist by the name of Sao Wa. He had been before his conversion a powerful chief, a noted warrior, and a much dreaded opponent of the gospel. Since he had become a humble disciple of Christ, his whole soul and being were given up to persuading his countrymen to accept that Savior whom he had once hated. With a stern and commanding posture, Sao Wa rose up and called for silence. Then, turning to the old man in the water, he said, O you, full of all subtlety and mischief, you child of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, wilt you not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Those Christians who witnessed the scene declare that, as he talked, the Holy Spirit seemed to fall on the assembly with awful power and impression. The disturbers, as though suddenly smitten with terror, fled from the water and ran up the hillside. But before leaving, many posts fell prostrate to the earth. At the conclusion of the service, the Christians lifted them up and carried them to the village. The father was found to be dead, and though the son afterwards recovered consciousness, the stroke proved fatal, and within a few months he followed his father to the grave. Who can reasonably doubt that this was a direct judgment of God upon the sin against the Holy Spirit? And can we wonder that again the record should be, and great fear fell upon all the people? This excerpt was taken from The Holy Spirit in Missions by A.J. Gordon. Listen to the full audiobook on scrollreader.com.